Hello guys and welcome to Discovery Doors at the Shayway and today we have a special guest, Callum, the local historian that we have, who is the expert on absolutely <laughs> everything that he knows oh, historically. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we always love to have him here because he's super smart and super intelligent. So let's get to it and with love from me and from Callum, we'll see you in the video. Today we're in Wareham, on the Saxon Walls. Taking a little video. What of me? Why are you? <laughs> I'm trying to get out of the camera view. You're just below me around. What's this, Callum? What's this ditch all about? I think that's part of the Saxon walls. Here in Wareham, there are many Saxon walls which were made to defend from the Vikings. Here we can see some of the example of the ditch that was made with the wall built up alongside it, where there's now houses that have been built on top. This is part of the uh, old Saxon kingdom of Wessex. As you look along here, you can also see more of the wall structure with some people sat on a bench up top. Very cool brickwork here. Where the uh, one is clearly a wall and then they've added a building and a roof to it later. And there's a <laughs> clear seam where they've laid them flat on the top. And the top one is think English bond with the head, row of headers and stretches. Bottom one is Flemish. What's that? Are the holes for aeration purposes? Ah, uh, I have no idea. And there's an old door there that I've just seen. Right yeah, there. saw that. <laughs> this is what's great about Wareham is there's so much um, cool old brickwork and. Uh, as we go into the town centre, get to see more of that. I love this, that they've, uh, this is a 2016 building, and actually I think it's a set of flats, but they've done it in uh, the style of old terraced houses. Like, well, there actually is one here, yeah. with the old wall support, the cross, the black cross there. I mean, this oh, is... Wow, <laughs> Such great examples of English vernacular architecture in this play. That's some cool stuff. I wonder, um, I wonder if that's still used. It's abandoned. Yeah, it's some, the, it's a lot. The windows at the top are all boarded. Probably an abandoned property, that one. I see it. Yeah, well, maybe being renovated. Maybe. But yeah, it doesn't look like it, does it? it? Isn't it? There's, that's the thing with Wareham, is it's, it does does have a few different sh sort of quite shabby properties because it uh, for a long time didn't do too well but it's because of that it's got a lot of um, very you know a lot of original architecture Tynum so that's got um, a massive metal that's rod that goes all the way through and then clamp the wall together on both sides to hold it up isn't it for the uh, yeah, ceiling as well? Yeah, so that's for the floor. Yeah. I assume, for the second floor. I'm not, uh, no, no, don't claim to be uh, an expert on that. Yeah, neither of us are experts. <laughs> yeah, we're, ju we we're, we're, just muse we're just musing, yeah. yeah. They've got an M and a B. How interesting, how unique. This will be quite a mismatch video Random bits of history chucked in next to other random bits of history. There's a post box here. Let's see what it is. Oh look, it's a GR. George the sixth. George the sixth. George the sixth post box. What era is that? I'm not sure. What we got here? Donated by the Rotary Club of Wareham, the Reverend John Hutchings, MA Rector of Wareham, 1744 to 1773, compiled here his history and antiques of the county of Dorset. This is the. Um last stage of the uh, River Froome before it enters Pool Harbour and I the magnet with me so we might see if we can find any history that way at some point later on as well this is your home river isn't it because this also runs through Dorchester it does, uh, it does. so <laughs> it's like home although this bit of this, <laughs> yeah this right, bit of it is actually tidal I think uh, this is where the, the tidal reach is still active some people we might, kayaking. Uh, have a little go of dipping it at some point. See what we can find. 
What's going on there? Have they got a flooded boat or something? Or are they magnet fishing? Are they magnet fishing? Maybe they're going out. I don't know, it looks a little bit like they're magnet fishing. Really? Maybe they've lost their keys. Huh? <laughs> Oh yeah, Saturday, oh, Saturdays they have markets on. Yeah, let's go check out the market while we're here. Oh look, they also do little uh, little river cruises you can get as well. So this, I believe, is the main thoroughfare if you were on the main high street. You see it goes along, there's a load of shops and other houses and things. And then as you go out that way, it gets smaller and smaller until you're back into... Marshland. The in the marshes, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's towards Dobra and Arn. Usually this is a car park area, but today it's for the market. Yeah. Local fresh caught fish. Oh, look. <laughs> Good day, Paul. I've got plain green olives. Just behind, ooh, almost fell in then. Just behind where Callum is, as you can see, showing you now, you've got the Riverside pub, which is the old granary. And that's the pub that I was talking about. There's a lovely, lovely sign just there as well. Oh yeah. And just down the way behind it, there used to be an old mill and an old blacksmith, if I'm correct. So we're just about to go to uh, where I'm I'm currently doing daily prayers for the people of Ukraine at 5 p.m. Monday to Saturday. Is it made? What's it made from? This font is unique, being the only hexagonal lead font in existence. The figures around the bowl depict the twelve apostles, and the bowl dates from about 1100. Wow! The octagonal Herbeck stone base is about a century later. Yeah. Two of all the apostles. That's cool. So Wareham Church is the Church of St. Mary's, it just tells us there. Tell out my soul the greatness of the Lord. AD 1200, AD 1650. And then at the top, on the left, AD 200, and on the right, AD 700. Very, very cool. This is under some kind of renovation. Stop it falling off the wall. Forever popping up. I saw these in London, all together at the Tower of London. They had a, they had a huge number of them. They um oh yeah it says right there eight hundred eighty eight thousand two hundred forty six poppies made for the art installation at the Tower of London in two thousand fourteen to commemorate the hundredth anniversary of the start of the First World War. And it's one of them's ended up here in Wareham. We used an old chain and also some of the old square nails like the ones we find. Oh yeah, is yeah. that from, um, oh it's across from the old, the chains of the old Studden Ferry. This is like really stacking into the history now. <laughs> wow, look at that vaulted ceiling, look at this chapel. Some of the stone is actually written upon it as well, but so worn away. Hmm, yeah I don't know what that says. Here lieth someone or other. In this chapel lie the remains of the Reverend George Hooten Hyde, Rector of Hope Mansell in the county of Hereford, and 
34 years rector of this parish, who died March 11, 1828, aged 58. Also, Diana, his wife, who died October 23, 1825, aged 52. Likewise, Henry, Emma, Diana and Francis, children of the above. The formal tribute and the respect and memory for the Reverend John Hutchins. It's interesting. They, uh, they mentioned him being in the service of the East India Company. It's a reminder of the colonial history. And of course, the East India Company goes back a long way, back into the 17th century. It's an effigy of Sir Henry de Stoke from the 13th century. And it's made of Herbeck marble. With a believed date of around 1240. That's absolutely stunning. It's one of the best, um, most colourful, intricate organ designs I've seen in churches around Dorset. As you come out of the church, you come across this beautiful old graveyard with some really nice gravestones. And it also brings you up towards this lovely pink thatched roof cottage, which is going to take us down to two rivers walk. It's very expensive to keep up a thatched roof now. Mm -hmm. They do need to be replaced every so many years, don't they? I think it's only, it only lasts about 20 years at most. Yeah, they're absolutely amazing for insulation. Yeah, and yeah. soundproofing. Yeah. But yeah, apparently you can't re even hear a lightning storm in some of these old cob thatched cottages. It is a dying art now, isn't it? There's yeah. not many thatchers around as there were. No. Not since the 1980s, anyway. God, look at those poplar trees in the distance. That reminds me of France so much, those tall poplars, because they plant yeah. them along avenues. And it's such characteristic of, of northern France and just generally flat, oh, open plains. Respect to all of these people for their service and their time. Mm -hmm. There's the Devonshire Regiment and they share the same symbol as the Dorset Regiment did as well for a while. And you can see there the symbol of the keep that we have up in Dorchester. There's one that I've not seen before. The King's Own. Yeah, if anyone knows what that <coughs> means, leave a comment. There's a gunner here as well from the Royal Field Artillery. It's one that I haven't seen often. And the Australian infantry here. Well done, next to it. In fact, we would do the Australian infantry along here. And this one. Blimey. Um, yeah. Blimey, that was, a, that was only three weeks before the war ended. Sad, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's all sad, isn't it? But it's, it seems is, especially yeah. poignant when it's so close to the end of the war. Oh, wow, 
It's very simple, isn't it? But that's um. Is that a German? I can't. I can't grave. Possibly, yes. Yeah. Quite possibly, yeah. Judging on the symbol, I would have thought, assumed so, yeah. I mean, I can't. Yeah, I don't. The merchant navy. Here. I don't know that, I, but willing to be corrected, but that'd be interesting to find out the yeah. history on that. Maybe we should look him up. So the German grave we saw there is number seventy-two, and I'm going to pronounce this awfully, but Juretsky Siopil, Airman of the German Air Force. This is his surname. So. Yes, it's yeah. surname first. And there's, and there's another, another one here. German airman there. Hofsky Horst. First name again would be Horst. Of the German Air Force as well. Right, we're going to attempt to do a bit of uh, magnet fishing. Now, Callum is perched really awkwardly. Like, you know when you have to give credit to the cameraman? <laughs> this is one of those moments. So, we'll see if we get anything, but we're not sure. Yeah, this is the channel which a lot of um, people take with their pleasure boats and things. We're hoping for no snags. Yeah. It is supposed to be quite a muddy marsh bit of river. Mm -hmm. But um, we'll just have to wait and see. See if anyone's dropped anything. Keys. See if anything's got buried or... Guns. Or something. Oh, there might be something there. Might be. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to tell because there's a lot of sludge. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling the sludge. I mean, we are stood on a um, big, muddy salt flat. We're also just on the edge of a jetty type thing, aren't we? Yeah. For like boats. What do you call this? It's like a mini dock. I think it is called a jetty. It is a jetty, yeah. Or a pontoon. Right, let's have a look. Oh, we got some stuff. Ooh. Oh, nice. First go in, and we've got ourselves oh, a horseshoe. Look at that! Very cool. Very nice. So there's definitely some history to be found. There's our first bit of water history from Wareham. Sorry if I get you at all, Callum. That's all right. I don't want to chuck too far because I can see the boys out there, and I might oh, be marking yeah. there. And also, I don't know if it's marking just the middle. If it's marking, there could be something there. Ropes, ropes getting twisted together. Yeah, you don't want to do that. Yeah. All the boats going going down there. We're currently waiting for the person who uses this uh, <laughs> little jetty to come back and be like, "Oi, get off my jetty, you!" Yeah, because it's. Uh, Callum is very precariously balanced on scaffolding. <laughs> it's potentially a private jetty, but um, I'm sure they won't mind. That's I don't you, know if there's it? anything on this one. Feeling a bit cleaner. It's bubbles coming up. Often, it often, often a good oh, sign. Something. There is something. Is it just? Oh, just flakes. Mm. Just some scrap flakes. Well, you can't win them all. We'll have a few more throws here, and um, if see if we get anything more, and then we'll move down and we'll see if there's any room for us to have a couple throws, and maybe a little bit more of an explore of uh, what was the old farm and a little bit of an old mill down the way there. Mm. Now across the marshes here is where all the tank um, firing range and stuff is as well. Yeah, you can see the those li that line of hills in the distance. Now, it sounds amazing for dipping, but it's illegal. You're not allowed to dip on MOD property. No. Sadly. Otherwise I'd be dipping around Lulworth and Bovington all the time. <laughs> Am I getting a pull from something? Maybe. Not sure. Might be a rock. There's definitely some some power in the river flow here. It's pulling mm. my magnet along, even though it doesn't look like it. Maybe the tide's going out. Is it just flakes? We've got a magnetic stone. Highly magnetic stone of some sort. Another random flake. Right, I reckon two more. And if the horseshoe's the best we get for now, then the horseshoe's the best we get, but that's kind of cool anyway, isn't it? But, Right, last go. It looks like the horseshoe was the best we got for this spot, but uh, we got... Well, actually, that's actually part of an old knife there. Oh, yeah. It's the old blade from a knife just there. 
So we'll get something else, just a butter knife blade, uh, another odd nail, and I think that's about it. So yeah, the winner to find for this spot was the horseshoe. We're at spot two for our dipping part of the adventure today. Just trying to get these gloves on, but they're acting like extra small condoms. Um, let's try it. No idea if we'll find much here, but we're just down, down river. Mm -hmm. From the yacht club, down yep. river from a yacht club. And, uh, Still in the middle of a marsh though. That way is Pool Harbour, that way back towards Wareham and obviously Dorchester and all that direction if you go far enough. Still in the middle of a marsh, still very very muddy bottom. But uh, we're yet again on the edge of a little jetty thing, so there might be something down there hiding that we might be able to grab if we're lucky. So because there's so much, um, so many yachts and pleasure boats come down here, I'm really hoping that, well, sounds someone's like sounds like some. sounds like a pretty horrible hope actually. I hope that someone's dropped some of their valuable belongings. <laughs> hey, not too bad of a hope because maybe we can hope to find them and return them. Yeah, yeah, to to totally. That was that was my. Uh... <laughs> yeah. That was where you were going with Yeah, that yeah. Just a couple of plates. Right, last one quick and then we'll shoot on. You don't want to get in the way of other people, particularly. This is yacht territory. A lot of swans coming up here too. You hear all the power tools going, every, it's uh, early October so everyone's uh, taking their boats off the water or doing maintenance and stuff. Super warm for October don't you? Yeah, it's 19 degrees today, 7th of October. Which is quite unusual for this, type, uh, this part of the country. Look at all those, uh, look at all those uh, swans and goslings, uh, is it goslings? No, no, no. Well, what's the baby swan? No, it's not Gosling. Yeah, I was thinking Gosling, but oh, it's... Oh, we got some, didn't we? Ooh. What did we get there? Oh, we got a little... Ah! Oh, was a... What's yeah, a... Um, ra uh, ratchet thingy? What's it called? I can't remember what it's called. From Halfords, look. <laughs> it's from Halfords. A sprocket thing, I can't remember. A sprocket ratchet, or whatever yeah. it's called. It's either that, or... Ah! <laughs> Gandalf's pipe. <laughs> you can see across the drained marshes the church that we were at and the graveyard and all those poplars that are pointed out. And this uh, dike here protects from the River Froome flooding, although there is a lot of flooding around here because it's very low lying. Quite nice with the boats in the river by the side, isn't it? Hmm. Yeah, so you walk along this embankment all the way down to Pool Harbour, I think. Did you hear what happened in Weymouth Harbour? What? Someone named their boat the Titanic 2 and then it sunk. <laughs> I'm no. not even joking either. I've yeah. local news recently. Either, either that's God having a sense of irony or they were doing an insurance scam. <laughs> And they thought that the joke might cover up the. Uh... <laughs> Surely no one would actually. Yeah, like they were that. just like, oh, this is. Uh, the, everyone will find it so funny, they won't look into our finances. <laughs> well, it was only a smaller boat, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Oh, you, you noob. <laughs> God, look at his, look at his webbed feet. Hello. Really cool. Again, I think there's nothing on that. Mm -hmm. I guess we'll uh, get back to you guys if we find something. No, this is the only thing that we found.
snake that we've seen. I don't know what type of snake. But we're going to take him off the road because it's not, uh, not the best place for him. Oh. Uh, on top, not underneath, please, matey. There we go, beautiful little snake. Aren't ya? Back out of the road where you won't get run over. We're just approaching Wareham Museum and um, it's free admission so we thought we'd take you in to have a quick look. But interestingly enough, the old museum is on the site of an ancient parish church of St Peter and the building was used as a town hall school and goal rebuilt. Jail. Jail, sorry, not goal, oh my lord. <laughs> yeah, it used to have to kick footballs into it and that was rebuilt in 1768 and 1870. Let's go on in. Ah, so these old, these fire insurance marks that have been on the outside of buildings and um, you displayed which one um, for the which fire service you would have come to your door. Yeah, if you look around the town you can see them as well. Yeah, I was, I was seeing them, yeah. Yeah. So, um, if you had a fire, you'd have to call up the specific company to come and put your fire out and they'd come along like this and put it out like that and if you didn't have one then they wouldn't come and do your fire and a different company would not come and put it out unless you paid um, an extra fee. Interesting. Which is quite cool and the, the lady here working is just telling us that you can actually see some of them still outside out there um, as you walk around the town. There's a reproduction sword here. Very cool. The original's in the county museum if you want to see the sword. Ah. If you have to go up to the county museum in Dorchester. <laughs> Do you petition? I live in Dorchester, Dorchester so yeah. yeah. So here's the reproduction and in Dorchester is the original. And we might be able to go and see that at some point. That'd be cool. Some hammered coins here as well. Very cool. Saxon pennies, there you go. Minted in Wales. I'm bringing back to the fire service stuff. You've got the old fire helmets and the fire axe in there as well. Very cool. These old little oil cycle lamps. We found one that looks very much like that one when I was magnet fishing before. But it wasn't in quite as good condition as that one is. There's an old town sign there, look. The old paraffin fired iron. German incendiary bomb tail fins. Found a couple of those before. Some cartridge casings. Some buttons and things. Yeah. <laughs> buttons from the air raid patrol warden's coat. Callum's showing us just here. That almost looks a little cute, doesn't it? Looks like he's got little lips. Oh look. Oh, nice. How cool. Yeah, it's the Morse code. Morse it's all here, code. man. All right, I'll write, I'll write Shay. You're going to write Shay? He's going to yeah, write yeah. Shay in Morse code. There's H. <laughs> that was a very slow version of Shay. <laughs> yeah. Very cool, though. Can you find these items in the museum? Well, we found the Morse code machine already, didn't we? And we found the oil lantern. We'll see if we can find the rest as we go around. Oh, there's the head, look. Oh, I get it. It's very cleverly been made to add on to this display and it looks like it's the head of the dinosaur coming out of the wall. Oh, these are really cool. I can't remember what they're called, but they're called Gerard Tyrant. And they're like, um descendant, uh, ancestors, sorry, of modern bird species today. Ammonites there. There's an, um, Topath Dipper's Little Dipper recently found himself an ammonite, actually. So go check out their page to see more on that. Some more ammonites here. There's a sword. Sword blade believed to be of the Tudor period, found by a group of boys playing on the walls. Plenty of history to find around here. Very cool. 
and there's an Elizabethan dagger just there. Medieval glass from the House of a Garden on North Street. Beads. Flint axe heads in there as well. You see that little bottle at the back there? It's a pilgrim's flask from Egypt in the 7th century. Oh, Lawrence of Arabia and his story. Here he is. Tells you a story through the times. Some cool pictures here. Saved history. I've actually, um, slowly over time, been picking up a few different books that have old artwork and old imagery in. And I'm hoping to uh, either pass them on to someone who's able to display them correctly, or I might even break them down and save some of the images inside and frame them. So they don't go to waste. But they should be for sale soon via my Facebook page. You can pay via PayPal or collect in person, if you so wish. If not, no worries. Well, we found some of those very, very recently as well, didn't we? I think they're to do with the train. Yeah, a bolt and railway sleeper clip from the Hejaz Railway, which Lawrence helped to destroy. Beautiful little table here. Some old pottery pieces, old, uh, Miniature samples of Sanford pottery products made for the travelling salesman. <laughs> Blacksmith's forge bellows. Yeah, wow. I didn't know they were quite that large. That's very big. And we've also got an eel spear here. Lovely bits of history. There's an old cider press just there. So you'd press your apples down, and all the juice would come out the sides of the wood and out the holes at the bottom and collect into here. And then it would run out of this tap at the bottom here, and that's how you collect it. Some old bottles. We love our old bottles, don't we? Old beer bottles there. Lovely embossed. Co op 9090. Some old products. Wear them. Flagons, ginger beer bottle, and medicine. The old scales, some old cobbler shoe lasts there. And there's some boys football boots from the 1940s. Wow, haven't they changed? Oh, speaking of flagons, check these out. They're massive. Wine and spirit of Wareham, that one. So this is pottery that's been made. Well, I've got some of these ones at home, home, you know. I find those in my old uh, Victorian. In fact, I've got that exact bottle at home. Really? Yeah. I'll see if I can get a good angle on it. Oh yeah, yeah. See, I've it's seen the Risley one with the crown. You guys may have noticed that in one of my videos, but yeah, a few of these old blacking pots and ink pots. Beautiful stuff. Some hot water bowls up there, like the one we've recently just received off Susie. Susie found a uh, shard of one, and sent this one. Very cool. And that also means that we can confirm that the stopper she sent us was more than likely from that water bottle. We've just um, come out of the museum and we've walked up the road and we walk up to this other church in place yeah. there, which Callum knows a bit more about than I do, so I'll let him talk about it. Well, I, I actually know very little about it. I've just seen it from the road. I think, I think it's a Saxon church, but I'm not certain. It's called St. Martin's Church. Um, and Lawrence and Arabia statue. Yeah, and there's a, there's it's a thousand years old, this this church, and uh, you can really get a good look at it. Amazing looking building. Apparently, the lady in the museum told us it's the only building with a with a only church with a church, yeah. chimney. Oh, look at all these chestnuts. Yeah. <laughs> nice. A little roasted chestnuts. I like roasted chestnuts. 
wouldn't mind picking some up of those. Uh, uh, oh, there's a there's clearly a window there, or a doorway. Interesting. Yeah. I guess in a thousand years a lot happens. And this is uh, North Street, the main road into Wareham. Medieval mains electric input. <laughs> <laughs> We're in luck. Wow. Look at that. Now this was worth coming to see. Wow. <laughs> Do you remember when we were in Sherborne Abbey and there were the uh, ten, ten Commandments on the wall? Yeah. Almost exactly like that. The same art style as well. Amazing, isn't it? We're really lucky here with the amount of history we have. Yeah. It makes me feel lucky to be able to come and explore these places and see these places for myself. Yeah. And share them with other people via YouTube. This is uh, the vow that Christians make or, something, or that they, you, you say this in... Um, uh, Confirmation. No, it's, no, it's you. You say this in services on Sundays. Okay. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended oh, yeah. into hell. Well, basically, it's a. Uh, a summary of Christian faith. I'm assuming it is wool. <laughs> do you want to do that again? Yes, I'm assuming. <laughs> is the Lawrence of Arabia statue or what would you call this really? It's like an effigy of some kind. An effigy. But, but it's not, it's, yeah, it is him. I, I, yeah. It, it says here. Yeah. E. E. Lawrence. Yeah. 1888 to 1935. And I've just tripped over him again. It does say, caution, trip hazard, proje <laughs> projecting base of plinth. In the roof. They look like they need replacing. <laughs> what, is the, what does it say in the arch there? Mm, it's, it's a hard font to read. We've just walk, been walking down a uh, back residential street, and uh, look at that. The fire plaques we were talking about to you in the museum, you can see three of them displayed in the, the buildings just here. These are, were for um, insurance, yep. and they told you whether the house was protected by an, an insurance for fire. Yeah, yeah, there's another one there. Yeah, I love exactly. that brickwork. Whew. <laughs> Gosh. You can see where the uh, windows have been bricked up. All three. Oh yeah, this is this is very cool. The uh, this is a cinema. Old fellow's cool. <laughs> it's called the Rex Cinema, I think. And uh, yeah, it's very old school type theatre. <laughs> A few things to notice on this building. The uh, little insurance thing, little animite. Beautiful. And the brickwork as well. You also see how they've used tiles which then go down onto slate. Yeah, it looks like a local stone. Because you have these roofs over in Langton Travers. And all of these fire insurance, all the way along the fire insurance bag. Yeah, I'm noticing them everywhere now. There's another one up, up ahead. Right there. Mm. Um, although we've done it, it might be a longer video, but we've done quite a quick whistle stop tour around. If you guys are interested in more of the older history, we can come back and do a part two where we can walk along the walls and talk to you guys about the Saxon and Viking history in particular of Wareham. 
Um, if that's something you'd be interested in, then please drop a comment. If we get a comment, then we know, and we'll come back. So thank you for joining us on today's adventure, and it's a goodbye from me. Bye. Bye from Callum, who's eating some Turkish delight. And we'll catch you in the next one.